Hey there, YouTubers! Sir? Ah, oh, welcome, Doctor. You had requested to speak with me? Yes, sir, I'm not happy with the work we've been doing here. I feel as if we're playing God by creating life from basic fundamental molecules. <laughs> you're so naive. Humans created the idea of God. Thus, you're just doing what humans have said to be impossible or taboo. You're not playing God. You're being a human in its purest form. You're a monster! Just like that slime you call a living thing that you had us create. I see now, Doctor, why you're leaving. You're simply too ignorant to understand your place here. Again, you refer to me as a human creation. This slime is a human creation no different than God or a monster. I can't believe you! Your own ego and power is driven you mad. I can't be in the same room or building with someone so evil and detached from reality. I'm leaving now. Goodbye, sir. I hope you find whatever it is that will make you content with these choices. Oh, you aren't going anywhere. You see, Doctor, the knowledge that you have is too sensitive to leave this room. Thus, you won't leave it alive. Ah! Ah! Oh! Hi there, Dr. Sheep here. Welcome back to another chemistry video. It's about time. Today is also a testing meme slash internet phenomenon video. Now, slime falls into a category of internet phenomena that really annoy me. This category also includes Fortnite fit and fidget spinners. Now, as much as I would like to experiment on a bunch of little kids with fidget spinners or troll nine-year-olds on Fortnite, I still really hate those things. Anyway, today we're going to explore the chemical makeup of slime. Then we're going to make some ourselves, and finally, put this phenomena to the test. Also, before I continue, I'd like to say that this meme is a tier one. If you don't know what that means, then go watch my other testing memes videos. Now, as to why specifically I want to explore slime, is for a few reasons. One is that it is simply a product of a chemical reaction, thus it's birth from pure science. Two is that as interesting, it has interesting physical properties that I will explore in the end of this video. So there are three ingredients to the slime we are making today. Each one plays an important role in this reaction. The first ingredient is school glue. This is a type of glue that contains a polymer. We've discussed polymers before on this channel. Last time was water absorbing polymer in my science of diapers videos. If you haven't seen it yet, here's the rundown. Polymers are long molecules that usually like to flow past each other like a fluid. The next ingredient is borax. Now people are trying to look for alternatives to borax. This is because they feel that borax is burning their kids. But I'll let this clip enlighten you. Hello class! Welcome back to the Life Hack channel! And today we're making slime! But we're not going to use borax because of recent claims of little boys burning their hands with borax slime. So instead, because I don't have very good lawyers, we're going to use contact solution. Yay! Because if you can put it in your eye, you can put it on your hands. Let's get started. Now they said to substitute the borax for contact solution to make it safer. However, science says otherwise. One of the ingredients in contact solution is sodium borate or sodium tetraborate di uh, decahydrate or disodium tetraborate. The funny thing about sodium borate is that that's the chemical formula for borax. So the substitution isn't actually a substitution at all. And this kind of misinformation is very dangerous. Okay, but why do you need sodium borate? Well, sodium borate, when dissolved in water, breaks down to sodium ions and borate ions. This brings us to the third ingredient, water or H2O. Water is needed to help the polar molecules slide past each other better or to break down the sodium borate. 
When the two solutions of glue and borax are mixed, the boron ions react with the glue molecules. If the water evaporates after the reaction, the compound will turn to a hardened block of plastic. This is why slime has the characteristics that it has. Water keeps the molecules in solution and prevents them from completing the reaction. Knowing all this will help us with the rest of the video. Welcome back to Cooking with Dr. Sheep. Today we're making slime. So first you'll need two bowls, each filled with water. Uh, now, how much water you need to put in each bowl will be dependent on um, well, how much borax and glue we're going to put in. Anyways, so first in one bowl, pour in a quarter cup of borax. Now, sorry to my metric viewers. Um, I blame America. Anyways, so we'll mix that in. Hopefully, there's enough water to dissolve it all. That's on my skin. I mm, all right. Okay. Well, I tried to get it all dissolved, but it's not working. So then you're gonna want to pour in an ounce of glue and this is five ounces uh, into another bowl so let's go for like a fifth of this I think that'll be enough we'll seal that back up then we'll add some water to the glue to dissolve it in solution This dissolves a lot better than the borax. And then also, a few drops of food coloring. Always helps. You know, look at that. Nice, vibrant green. And then, moment of truth to see if I actually am a chemist today. Uh, we add the glue solution to the borax solution. And we should see a transformation. Or, you know, me just dirtying my table even more. Uh, do make sure your water is lukewarm. If it's too warm or something else, um, you'll just end up with problems. Oh heavens, I have so much borax mixed in with this, still, <laughs> there, there's chunks of borax in this, and oh my gosh, that is sticky, and slimy, and well, that's what we wanted, I guess, um, except I have to dissolve more of this borax before this would be, you know, uh, reasonably safe for children, or myself, for that matter. Anyways, uh, let's just cut. Whoa, time jump. Yeah, it's the next day. That slime, or slime I tried to create, uh, ended up flopping. It, it didn't work. Um, there was too much water, and like I said, if there's not enough water or too much water, you don't get slime, you get plastic, or in my case, uh, sticky stuff and a bowl full of water. I let it sit overnight, and it was just a bowl full of glue and water. Anyways, um, I still want to talk about the, some of the character, the physical characteristics of slime, just because it, they're really interesting. So slime is something that we call a non-Newtonian fluid. This means it flows like a fluid, but if a substantial amount of force is applied, it acts like a solid. Um, this isn't the first time we've discussed this. A long time ago, almost two years ago now, I made a video, uh, it was a re review of Crazy Aaron's Liquid Glass Thinking Putty. Yeah, that uh, putty is also a non-Newtonian fluid. I believe I mentioned it in that video. Uh, you don't have to go watch it. In fact, I would not recommend watching it. It's bad. Anyways, um, I've mentioned non-Newtonian fluids before, and the slime, it's the same thing. Uh, I'm going to play slime where I place Fortnite and fidget spinners uh, for the foreseeable future, unless I decide maybe I can try this again, but probably not. But in the meantime, I would like to thank you all for watching. Please like, comment, and share. New videos every other Friday, 4:30 p.m. Central Time, and good night. 
Oh, you're still here? I thought I told you to go home. Oh, you want more? Well then please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you know every time I post. And while you're there, check out the playlist. Oh, you're still not satisfied? Well then check out my Instagram for exclusive content. And if you really want to help me out, you'll stick around for the next 20 seconds to give me that sweet watch time. Bye.